I craft these stampers. So this is um, Catch Your Dream. Now this is the free stamp set that you got for this. Um, this stamp set's getting mixed reviews, but I have had really good luck with it. So I'll show some tricks and stuff when I'm doing these stamp sets. The other thing I'm going to be using here are you have some clouds and stuff. And once again, I'm using the Dollar Store Crafter Square, the new one that came out, if anybody was lucky to get that. So in this stamp set, you should have your envelope, your base folded piece, and a top piece. So this is what we're, idea we're going to start with, okay? And also with your set, you should have got several pieces of these. So you're going to set one aside that you're going to have for your clouds. And you can't cut this one down if you want to. And I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, but So save one for your cloud color. Then these we're going to use for um, stenciling with... Uh, different uh, brushes and stuff. So the best thing to use if you have is these blending brushes. That works really well. You could probably use a sponge, um, any other blending thing you have. Um, that would work too. Um, so let me go ahead and start and show you how I did this. So the colors that I use for the rainbow, I use Distressed Oxide because it smooths really nice. Um, you can use any of your different colors of inks. Um, I would test it a little bit, maybe on a, um, a scrap piece of paper with your die cut that I gave to you and see how it would work with that. Um, the Stress Oxides blend really well. So the colors that I used for mine was the Mowed Lawn, um, the Ripe Persimmon, um, Pickled Raspberry, White Wilted Violet, Stormy Sky, and Mustard Seed is what I'm going to use for mine. Um, so I would I start out with, let's start with the base part. This is what we're going to try to achieve. And this is a sample I made, and I'll show you how to do this one. But I did do this one a little bit too far down because what you want to do is have enough room to put uh, Catch a Dream down at the bottom you can if you make a mistake you can always put it off to the side on here but I would start this about a half an inch down from the top on that so there's one thing that you can do with um, your stamps to help them if you get a little bit cheaper stamps I'll show you a little trick um, that you can do for stamping with them that helps so how I did this, I actually did embossing with mine. You can just stamp it black if you want to, but I did embossing with mine because when you're doing um, a little bit of coloring like this, the embossing will shine and it will stick out a little bit, and I'll show you how I did mine. So what you want to start with is we're going to start with this one. Take your white piece of paper, start with this one. Um, I have regular Momentum ink. I also have... A Versa color black pigment ink so this already has the Versa in it that's for um, heat embossing and I'll show you a little trick too um, so if you want to use just your black sometimes when you get these stamps um, you need to rub them with a cloth to get the oils off them and stuff because some people start stamping with them and they think oh they don't work very well well you got to treat your stamps first a little bit so you can rub them, or another trick is take regular Versamark, the clear one, and stamp that on here, then stamp it in your color, and then stamp it. And what happens is that Versamark will adhere the, the ink a little bit better to your stamp to kind of treat it a little bit when you first do it. So we're going to heat emboss this one. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Versa Color. And you can barely see it. It's probably because I need some new black. So I'm going to do my regular black on here, which doesn't hurt to add some color. Okay, so then I want to do is find out the half inch that I want to go down, center it in the center, put it down and press it and I would leave it there for a little bit and just press it 
Okay, and this is if you guys are doing the heat embossing. So lift it up and see it stamps really well for a dollar store stamp. That's if you treat it with the Versa and you rub it and you do some stuff. It will uh, work really well. The leaves, the feathers are just beautiful on this one. So then you would do is put some clear embossing over it. Like I said, you don't have to do this. You can just stamp it in black if you don't have all this stuff. And I do each section just to make sure. And before I forget, what you should have done is um, put your embossing buddy down on your piece of paper. But since I'm doing a black, um, normally when you do other colors, you're supposed to do that too. But you can see the color changing to a deeper black. And I'll have a little bit of dimension to it. And I just hold it up in the light and make sure I got all the pieces and I don't, that little corner. So that's that. And it dries pretty fast. So then you want to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to do it in the Versa Black first and regular black. And the reason I'm doing that because my Versa Black is not dark enough right now. I need to add some more stuff. So you just want to stamp it, let it, let it stay there for a little bit, pull it up. And we're going to put a little bit of powder on this. And if you're really talented, you can actually do the whole thing and all at once. But me, I always smear everything. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and wipe this off. Make sure you have all the liquid off here. Okay, once again, we're going to put it in Versa. And I'm going to put in my black. And then you want to stamp it down. Line it up. some embossing on it and do a heat set with it. Got something on here. Okay. And that cools down and dries pretty fast on here for this. Okay. And what I try to do too is I try to wipe my hands because you've used a lot of black. And any tiny little black on your hand, you're going to put it on your cards and stuff. And then that's terrible when you've spent so much time on your card and you have a black smudge from your hands so go ahead and put all your stamp colors away because you do not want to mix your black up with stuff onto things so what we're going to do is start with um the rainbow and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start coloring my um my top one first. This one kind of pops up a little bit. So you can take any one of these that you want. Take a color that you like. I'm going to go ahead and do mine in this uh, stormy sky. You just want to blend it. And I'm kind of doing it random because you want it to make look like a cloud a little, not perfect. A little bit of lines in it and stuff. And 
You want to go ahead and do the whole piece of paper because we are going to cut it down. Okay, so set that aside and let that dry. So we're going to go ahead and start doing the rainbow effect on this one. So what you want to start with, you got several pieces of paper and some of them you don't want to reuse for different colors because sometimes your ink from your brush will spread onto the other ones. So I gave you several that you want to switch up a little. So what we want to do first is I do have a purple down here, but um, <clears throat> that purple is going to be just hidden by the bottom here that I'm going to do after the last Part. I'll show you that. So the first color we really want to start with is the second color on here. So you kind of just want to figure out where how much you want to inch up to. And it doesn't matter if you don't make it, you can always repeat your colors. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to start with the pickled raspberry. And you can tape your thing down or you can hold it down. You just make sure, hold it down good so it doesn't move. So you wanna blend that a little bit. And then lift it up. And the next color we wanna do is orange. And I have a brush for different colors. Let's see, you're going to have this kind of effect a little bit on like that. Okay. And then what you can do, if you want to blend in the colors a little, go back with your pink, your color down here. And we're going to blend it a little. Or another thing that you can do too is you can start at the top and we're going to do let me get this one right here you can start at the top and this will blend it different so let me get the I'm going to do the sky up here so it will blend with Okay, and see how I mean if you mix colors of the orange and the gray, it does get a little bit of orange here. But if you're doing a rainbow effect, it doesn't matter too much. So the next one I'm going to do is a purple. And if you want to, you can take your brush or whatever you have and kind of get off the heavy part. Because you don't want to do it really, really heavy to begin with. So do it kind of light because we can always do it heavier. And see, if you do from the top down, this one will blend into this a little bit better, so you'll get a better blended effect than going from the top up. I wanted to show you how the difference of those are, of how you go from the top up, how you don't get the blended effect. Then from going from the top down, you get more of a blended rainbow effect, if you can actually, it will blend into these colors a little bit more. So it's best to start from the top down and do it that way. So the next color we want to do is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the green. Okay. And the next color I'm going to do is a yellow. And if you want to, you can move this over back and forth a little bit, just so the clouds, you get a different kind of um, format a little bit for the different cloud area. So it doesn't all the same pattern all the way down. You can move it back and forth just a hair and that will help out a lot. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do is an orange. Let 
you can see how this blends a little bit different than this one if you do from the top down because you're blending the colors when you're going over them this one you're not so it does give a different effect okay so then i'm going to do orange and do That's one thing, just keeping track of your colors that you, your brush colors. I don't have mine <laughs> marked really well. See, that's more of a, that's not it. Where is the, must be this one. Okay, so I think I'm going to just go ahead and do, I don't know, I love that yellow. I'm going to do the yellow again. You don't have to have a true rainbow. Then I'm going to shift this over again. And I really like the orange. And then I'm going to finish off the bottom with purple. So you don't have a line there. I mean, your, your pattern. So what you're going to do is just put this down like this and rub it. And rub it up into the orange so you can get that blended effect. And so there's that. And so that's showing you of going different directions really matters on how your blending works. Because this is going to be, if you go from the bottom up, it gives a harsh, harsh colors and you can't blend them because after you go in, you can't really blend them. And then when you're doing this, you can actually blend them into the other colors and do it that way. So that's kind of a, a blending effect with that. So then when you got your blue done, I would go ahead and decide where you want it to go. And I kind of put mine like right on the edge of where that roping kind of was up a little bit. So then you should have got some uh, mounting tape. just put it all along here because we're going to have the clouds stick up a little bit and this is kind of the cheaters way to do it so this is too big but we're going to figure out where we want it so go ahead and take off the extra strip and kind of lay it down how you want it to look with the dream catchers okay then you're going to going to take your scissors and we're going to trim the back like this because if you pre-cut that piece which you always could sometimes it's not the size that you want and the area that you want it at so there's that remember if you want a softer colors uh, put your brush or your sponge out on paper first and then do it. So then all you have to do with that now is put your Catch a Dream. And I did mine in just regular black. And if you have room down at the bottom or if you have room off to the side, and if you want to... Emboss that one too. Go ahead on that. But that's that. And just attach that to your back of your folded card 
And that makes a beautiful card. And there's a lot of fun to do with that. Um, this one you have. Um, you can even have feathers falling down from this if you want. Because there's uh, extra little feathers. Um, be brave. Um, there's this dream catcher if you don't like that one. This one's not as um, long though. And um, just have fun with that. Just remember when you have stamps, if you have issues with them, try to do some Versa first on your stamps to adhere your ink on. Um, and that helps with the color to be more vibrant a little bit. So if you have questions, let me know. Thanks.